Your money does not get up and walk out of your bank account on its own. Today, I'm gonna to help you rethink how you spend money. And in the process, I'm gonna help you realize that one of the easiest ways to save money, and this is gonna blow your mind, is to just stop spending. That's right. So what are you spending, besides what you just told me in your comments uh, that you're, you spent $500 or more on, what else are you spending all that money on? All the money that comes in, and if you look at it, and typically when I force clients to do this and they look at how much money they're actually making, um, they can't figure out where it's going either. They're like, I make that much money, how am I spending it all? Uh, it happens a lot, but it, it, you know, it's a few hundred here on clothes. It's a few thousand there on a, on a trip to Florida that you just had to take. It's a few thousand more, you know, maybe per month to keep that Range Rover or that Mercedes in your driveway. You know, but what does that matter? You know, you're still saving money in other places, right? Right? Are you? Uh, you know, and if it's not you, maybe it's your spouse. You know, of course, you are going to shun expensive modern conveniences and, and become borderline Amish if you could. But your spouse, they're the one who actually prefers luxurious things, right? So you just go along with them, you know for your marriage's sake, when we're, especially when we're spending. Certain conveniences that, that relieve us of our money, that we convince ourselves are absolutely essential to our lives, but they really aren't. And again, I'm no saint here. Uh, I talk about uh, you know this entire season, I've been sharing information that I, I, I don't claim to be perfect in. Uh, I certainly come from a place uh, when I was in practice where I did the same thing. Uh, everything that came in and, and uh, you know I, I built a big business and everything went back out. I speak from that experience here when we're talking about this. Um, so again, I, I don't claim to be perfect. I've definitely had my moments. Uh, I, I've, I've been trying to be clear about that this entire season to make sure that you know whether it comes to relationships or finances. Uh, I don't claim to be perfect in those areas. The things that I'm working on, there are things that I'm studying, uh, and this is certainly one of them. Uh, I, I've spent a lot of money in my life. I've bought a lot of necessary things, and that's the experience that I'm speaking from here. So uh, again, we buy these things that we think are just we have to have, your money is just funneling out, funneling out, funneling out, but, and what are you funneling in? You're funneling in more stuff. And, uh, you know, I've talked about it several times on our productivity shows, that how that stuff and that clutter actually stops you from being more productive. There's more things you gotta worry about. There's things, more things you gotta maintain. Uh, and a lot of times that stuff that we're funneling in is useless stuff, or basically useless. Uh, you know, one-time use, perhaps. Uh, ultimately, what you're actually trying to buy if you look at the fact that, that the stuff is actually mostly useless, what you're actually trying to buy is, is moods. What you're trying to buy is feelings. What you're trying to buy is happiness or joy. Anything that we buy outside of the essential basic ingredients that are needed to sustain our life are typically for feelings. I mean, imagine if you could afford a bigger house or even the biggest house. Although I saw one yesterday, I think came up on the Facebook feed, like a $250 million house that's on the, uh, the market. It was like a 12 minute video, so I watched like four seconds, four seconds, four seconds, but it was a crazy, crazy property. But imagine you could you could afford that. You know, you'd have all the amenities. Maybe you're on the golf course. You know, you've got tons of rooms, areas for entertaining, this huge property. People would be impressed, right? You know, everyone who visits would be like, wow, that is a huge, impressive house. Now think about it practically. Think about all those rooms that are gonna be empty like 90% of the time. Think about the size of your family and what you need. Think about the waste of having to heat and cool all of those empty rooms. Uh, thinking about being alone with your family on your huge property, wasted space all around of you. Uh, if, if your kids are any like my, anything like mine, they're in the same room you are all the time. Uh, you know, I, I'm often, especially like, anybody else have this experience? You end up in the bathroom, your entire family in one bathroom. And I'm like, it's a big house, guys. Please spread out. Uh, but anyways, look at it practically. Look at all the, the wasted space that goes along. Would you still buy that house? We look at it for the one time, you know, when we're, when we're entertaining and when we're doing this, but think about the practicality of having that huge house and most people wouldn't, wouldn't buy it anymore. Uh, you look at the money wasted and what else that could go to. And my guess would be no, they wouldn't buy it. That's because deep down, nobody wants to be wasteful. We don't think about it that way. We don't look at the practical side of it. We simply think about the experiences, uh, you know, which again are few and far between in something like that. Most people don't wanna live that kind of life of, of wastefulness. You know, few people actually do. You know, it, I, I found that only the ultra rich, from what I've seen, who can just like throw hundred dollar bills anywhere, what do they care? And if you're them, stop watching my show, <laughs> go do something else. Uh, but but the people I talk to just aren't like that. 
the problem is we don't always use our senses of practicality like I talked about when we make a purchase like that. We're thinking about the Joneses down the street or, or the status of having such a house. Uh, and I'll admit, f buying for your ha feelings is a tough habit to break because, again, I said I've been there. Practically everyone does it. It becomes very common and it's very hard to break it once you've started it. Uh, so if buying for our feelings is so normal and so accepted, then what are your options? Well, let's at least try to get those feelings for the best possible price, right? More bang for your buck. Save a deal. Uh, I knew a family uh, one time who rented their home. And actually, kind of sad, because uh, they couldn't pay their bills. But for some reason, you know, and I say this as if it's one family, but I've seen it a lot. Uh, where I used to work when I was an associate many, many years ago, uh, you know, you drive by what would be considered the projects, and they all have a real nice car out front. They all have the dish on top of their their uh, um, project, I guess you call it. Uh, that's a different story. Now we're talking about welfare and a whole different political thing that I don't want to get into. Uh, but these people that, that, that really can't pay their bills, the house is stocked with, stocked with luxury items. They have brand new electronics. They have, always have the nicest phone. They have the sign furniture, sports cars out in the driveway. Uh, the family that I'm talking about, though, soon wasn't long before the sheriff showed up and kicked them out of the house. They ended up losing a lot of that stuff. Uh, you know, and they thought that the stuff that they were buying was giving them happiness, but what they really was doing was was delaying their unhappiness. So that's an extreme example of a family who who were buying things, but they were actually getting the lowest possible return on their feelings investment. Uh, they thought they were buying this happiness, but it was not a good return because obviously in the long run they ended up without all that stuff. So if things aren't an efficient way to buy happiness, what about experiences? You know, a lot of people talk about that. Well, what about travel? Uh, travel is most definitely a positive. I love to travel. Uh, so on, on some levels, it might actually work as far as buying your happiness with those experiences with that travel. Experiences to me are far more interesting and memorable than, than things, than stuff that clutter up your area. You know, you'll remember your family trip long after your iPad has made it its way to the bottom of the trash heap. You know, it has used up its usefulness. So that's all well and good. Uh, and I wouldn't necessarily argue against travel, uh, especially as much as I do travel. But I would argue that there's still, uh, there's one more way, there's one way to do more with your money, to get even more for your bang for your buck than travel. And that is to com completely stop spending. So why make money if you can't spend it? What's the point? And that's exactly what I'm talking about. If all of this stuff, but I want to look at it a little differently. If all of this stuff that you're surrounding yourself with isn't making you happy, if the continued spending hasn't made you happy to this point, if all the things that you've accumulated with the spending hasn't made you happy to this point, then what is the point? Research has shown that those who have more money in the bank, more security, more money in investments, uh, which usually means less spending, are happier than the people who consume more. They're happier than the consumerists who are constantly going after that next thing. So just stop spending. 